This is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made. You you look like you're, you would like to push five more minutes snooze button on today. I really do. I can I can see it. You're you've got the cute little morning eyes. Hey, what's up, family? I'm Rachel. And I'm Joe. And we are Two, two Crazy, Crazy Ketos. Ketos. And if you're new to our channel, welcome. Here on Two Crazy Ketos, we do different things, like recipe videos, and we do product reviews. We talk about various keto topics, and then every Monday, we sit down on the couch for Keto on the Couch. We just kind of talk about what's going on in our lives for the week. You can find us in different social media platforms like Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And we have a website, which is twocrazyketos.com, and that's where you're going to find all of our different recipes. Now we do upload at least five new videos every single week, so make sure you subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to hit the little bell icon, and that way every single time I'm packing some butter in my coffee, you'll be alerted to it. Welcome to day 36 of Beef Butter Bacon and Egg Challenge. I'm having a great week. <laughs> I love the fact that I feel like we have had the energy for the vacation coming home from the vacation to Las Vegas, right? I feel like no matter what, we, we've, been, we've been in the desert and we've been by the water. And I right. mean, it, everything that we've done this week, I feel like we've been fueled and I feel good, yeah. which is nice. Yeah, I mean, I, overall, I'm really enjoying like eating this way. You know, I definitely like the way we feel. Um, I'm excited to add a couple of things back in just like, as far as like when we cook to be able to have more flavor or adding like some okay. hot sauce or, oh, or yeah. putting like the keto chow beef base into our ground beef. Yes. You know, but I, I'm pretty much going to continue eating mostly meat. Like one thing I definitely think, at least for me, I, I think that like the whole aspect of eating a giant bowl of salad to fill me up is, is gone. Like, yes, we're, we'll eat vegetables probably, but back to the way we were doing it, which is far and few between. Like, go out to eat at Texas Roadhouse, it comes with broccoli, I'll eat the broccoli. But going out and buying a whole bunch of vegetables, not going to happen. And here, I was thinking about this yesterday, and, and we've mentioned it before, but people say, well, how do you afford this? Which we've shown that it's not that expensive to eat beef, butter, bacon, egg. As a matter of fact, my friend yesterday was telling me that like they're really enjoying it. Uh huh. And uh, we actually save money not buying vegetables because do you know how many vegetables we would throw out because you buy them with the intention we of eating them? We have not thrown anything out. Right. This so, whole challenge, we you, have not lost any groceries. No, you cook it. And then if there's leftovers, you put it in the refrigerator and then you eat that. And, you know, there's no issue of like, oh my gosh, that's gone bad. Like the lettuce is wilted. The broccoli is no good. And it's interesting. If, do some research on it. You find like the amount of vegetables that people have to throw out because they buy them and then they never get to them. Well, it's interesting. Hey, I'm saving money. Well, think about that. When I think mm. about like when I'm gonna start a challenge of this sort, or that the, we were thinking, okay, what vegetables do we need to get rid of? But I've said that even outside of a challenge. Right. It's like, oh, we have to eat this because I've got this pepper that's about to go bad, or I have this right. cucumber that I need to use. But we haven't had none of that. There's no opening the drawer and finding that mushy, disgusting cucumber that's liquefied that's wild. in your drawer. No, you're right. And so we haven't had a stinky refrigerator either. No. Which has been a nice side effect of this whole thing. I do plan on having some jalapeno peppers every once in a while. Well, but, but again, those we have a hard time keeping in the house. We, we were out of control even with those. Like, I don't think we're supposed to be eating, you know, 10 jalapeno poppers every single day for four straight weeks. We're not? No. Okay. So, yeah. I was at my game yesterday. I was talking to my friend who, you know, his wife was having some inflammation issues and, yeah. and some struggles with sleeping and things like that. So, they're not full-fledged dove in yet but they're making a transition but they're making the transition he's like they pretty much eliminated all the sugar that's a and, huge victory um he's like they haven't been eating bread and stuff he said now they're gonna get they're gonna start watching the videos that we sent them to watch 
and like start eliminating all the pasta and all that stuff. My nose is like I can tell. itchy today. Um, and he's like, she's sleeping better. Her stomach isn't giving her that like cringy, naughty thing anymore. That's so, awesome. And he's like, I feel better. And I'm like, you, you just keep diving in. And he, the one thing he said to me, he was like, I forgot how good pork bacon tastes. Because that's all off limits right. in the past. So he said they were eating a lot of turkey bacon, but they weren't eating turkey bacon because it's cheaper. Because honestly, it's not it's cheaper. It's not. He was like, we thought it was healthier. Right. And then when you told me, look at the label of everything, and I turned it over, and he's like, there's sugar in it. There's a lot of different fillers because everybody knows that turkey bacon does not like match up with pork bacon well here's the thing listen so they gotta to add me, some stuff turkey bacon actually tastes pretty decent is it pork bacon no no but it tastes okay but it doesn't taste like turkey i always feel like it's off it's like skim milk it's milk that's lying it's water well, that's lying that it's milk my point is if you look at it don't look at it as bacon it's just like a piece of lunch meat that they happen to call turkey bacon it's got a good taste but it doesn't taste like the bacon no. that you get on Thanksgiving morning. It tastes like a type of ham. Right. Well, in order to do that, they have to be doing something with the flavor, There's which some is going on. add sugar. Yeah. I'm going to think that, though. I'm going to remind myself, instead of calling it turkey bacon, I'm going to say, like, turkey lunch meat. Yeah, well, and, that, and I think that is the thing that you have even on the keto lifestyle. One of the problems that some people have especially when you um are switching over and they they start looking for substitutes right and especially if you're just getting started my recommendation is always don't look for a substitute yeah because the substitute's not the same you know are some of the keto cookies out there whether they're homemade or store-bought delicious absolutely yeah they don't taste like an Oreo. No. They don't taste like a Chips Ahoy. Then you feel let down and deprived. And, and so what? that's what happens is you get the turkey bacon thing. You pick up that cookie and you think, not as good. I still want the real one. Outside of keto, turkey bacon always reminded me I'm on a diet. Because you'd be right. doing regular bacon if you could. Right. So turkey bacon, it was like that. So when it comes to your keto lifestyle, your carnivore lifestyle, your, you know, whatever eating show it plan that you're going to do. Except no substitutes. Well, don't look for substitutes. Yeah. Yeah. You know, people say, that, well, you can't have bread. No, I can't have bread, you know, but I can have bacon and I can eat two pounds of ground beef. Oh, and before we go, I did want to address that. So I like the word when it comes to what I'm eating, I can't. Everybody is different. Oh, yeah. Right? So er everybody has to get through the challenges that they have their way, what suits them best. For me saying I can't have bread, that keeps me in line. Some people will say I choose to not have that. Okay. If I use that terminology with myself, and again, this is me, and you may be different, but if I use, I choose to not have bread today, that means tomorrow I may choose to have like bread. Like it's still an option. But for me, when I use the word, and I don't like the word can't when it comes to doing something. Like I've always told the kids, don't tell me you can't fix your car. You can if you put your head down and, and, and try to learn, watch YouTube, like Caleb's been trying to learn how to work on his car. But if I put the word, I can't have this, it's just a, nope, you can't have that. Don't even look at it, don't even think about it. But that's just how I am. How do you need to? Well, I, I like that because just because I can't doesn't mean you can't. It's right. not a, it's not transferable. Right. So, I mean, you can do something different than, than I do. Um, in my mind, because uh, the way that we talked with our kids, raising them, you'd see like a child acting up, mm -hmm. you know, talking to their parents and inappropriately or something. And the kids would look at me like, is that permissible? Is that how, how we're supposed to act? And I would say, we don't do that. Right. That's no judgment on someone else. I'd be like, we don't act like that. We right. don't do that. We don't treat others like that. We don't 
speak that way. We don't use that verbiage. So um, I kind of, in my mind, am saying like, I don't do that. that right. That's what's going on in my mind. However, right. I convey it like, you know, does Rachel, eat, do you eat rice? Do you eat, you know, beans? Do you, Rachel doesn't do that. Right. That's what I'm thinking in third person. Like, yeah. I don't do that. That yeah. doesn't mean that other people can't. I just, for us, Right. That's what, you know, that's what I do. So that's kind of what's going on in my mind when I think about like, oh, that's not for me. That's not for me. Right. I, you know, on this challenge, it's, I think to myself as I pass by the, the um, vegetable section, oh, I don't do that right now. Right. That, that's not for me over there. And you the, know, and then I can pass through it. The point is, is you need to use the terminology that works verbally for you. and in your mind that works for you. It's just like you have always said you know what you're allowed to eat and what you shouldn't eat and, and what's going to affect you. Uh -huh. Yet a lot of times you will eat that stuff anyway. Right. Unless you're on a challenge because the challenge has now told you I I can't yeah. have this anymore. We right? don't do that right but now. But when you're not in the challenge, uh -huh. you are, you know what, not a big deal. Yeah. And so that's why you love challenges. You love challenges because challenges keep you they more accountable. They really keep me on track. So I, ha I need like monthly, weekly, seasonal challenges. Right. That really helps me. You don't want me heading into the holidays with no plan. Right. That, that is a plan for disaster. So I really challenge everyone as we're going into like the end of October, November, December, have a plan. That's right. And I would say have some level of challenge for yourself. You're gonna be so much happier January 1st, if you're like, hey, for November and December, the, this is the fence that I have around the holidays. Yeah. It may be a wider fence. It may be, you know, if you go to a campsite with like, when we take Tabitha or, or we take Boaz, we have like a little play air fence and it's bigger than normal so that they have more room to roam, but like not the entire RV park, right. you know, because that would be dangerous to them. That's right. So I would say make it a little bit bigger than normal, but have something. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, it is Sunday morning, so we are going to get going. I'm going to butter up. I got some water. I'm going to go get in the shower. You are leaving. I and am. Then, uh, I don't know what lunch is yet. Haven't I haven't made the plan. So Rachel is still at church. Uh, she was going to stay to serve the last service. And then she wanted to set up kids ministry for next week since we're going to be camping in the Keys on Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. So since she was doing that, I had a little bit of time. I ran to Costco to pick up a couple of more of these eye round roasts because these things are delicious. They make a really good roast beef. On the Kamado Joe, we're putting it on the rotisserie. It's only taking like an hour to an hour and a half to cook. I'm going to perfect it. You know, last night was somewhere between a medium rare to a medium. Uh, we really want to get it down to just a medium rare. And I think the key is going to be, as I said in yesterday's vlog, the key is going to be to letting it come to room temperature. And I'm kind of impatient. And you know what? We think about it at the last minute. But it's a great thing if you need something pretty quickly because it's so delicious. But also, it's very cheap. I mean, it's $5 a pound. So this package that I got here, there's two roasts in here, and this was $24. So that's $12 a roast, and each roast gives us like two days worth of meat for each of us. So that's $3 a day for a whole bunch of beef at dinner time. You can't beat that. I mean, especially when you look at the current prices of beef steaks. I mean, you're up there right now paying that. That's what a lot of people are paying for just ground beef right now. And so that's really good. So we're going to make one of those up. Uh, probably tomorrow morning while we're doing keto on the couch and we're going to take it with us down to the keys and i think i'm going to make like some kind of either uh, a hollandaise sauce or something to kind of pour over the top i think it's going to really elevate it but she also said she wanted something really delicious for dinner and she's been working really really hard so i decided to surprise her and make her her new favorite food and i bought another pork belly so this pork belly was $48. This is a really big one. What I'm going to do is I'm going to cut it in half. I'm going to go ahead and put some of the Redmond uh, garlic pepper seasoning over it. We're going to fire up the rec tech and we're going to smoke another pork belly. Smoke it like a brisket. We had that in the video the other day. I'll leave a link for that video up here. 
It is super delicious. All of the fat melts. It tastes good. And you know what? It takes like two to three hours to cook. So I'm gonna go ahead and get all of that ready to go. Okay, I'm gonna try something a little different. First of all, we don't need that entire pork belly. That is a lot of pork belly for just two people, especially just for a meal. Uh, so I cut it in half, and I'm gonna put half of it into a bag, get a cure going on it to make bacon. Then we can smoke that bacon in about a week and a half. The other half is what we're gonna put on the smoker. And like I said, I'm gonna cover it in this Redmond's organic garlic pepper. This stuff is really good. There's a link down below and you can use the code 2 Crazy Ketos to get 15% off. But I'm just enjoying it. You can see, I, this is a new container. Look at how much I've already used in just like the two weeks that we've gotten it. But it's really good. But I wanna elevate the flavors just a little bit and I need something to get the seasoning to stick to the pork belly. A lot of times I'll use mustard, you know, especially like on beef ribs, I use mustard, but I don't know how mustard is gonna go with the pork belly. So we're gonna try something a little bit different. I uh, haven't done this before, hopefully it tastes good and I'm not gonna waste $25 in pork belly. And I know I'm gonna get some hate for this right now, but I'm gonna put a little bit of this Frank's Red Hot. And I know you're thinking, well, is that really beef butter, bacon, and eggs? Dr. Barry said we can have some zero carb spices. So. The ingredients in this are literally just cayenne pepper, vinegar, water, salt, and a little bit of garlic powder. This is zero carb. I'm not gonna use a lot of it. We're just gonna put a little bit on there, kind of rub it in. That'll make the pork belly nice and sticky, and then we can put the seasonings on top of that. Hopefully, this works. I don't even know. It, it sounds good to me. Put a little bit of hot sauce onto your bacon. But we're gonna go ahead and try it. Okay, so we're just gonna take a little bit of the hot sauce, just a few drops. Now, when you get this, if you buy the Frank's Red Hot, make sure you don't buy the wing sauce. That's got bad oils in it. See, we're not using a lot. We're, we're probably, a, ta a serving of this is a teaspoon. So I'd say I just put on maybe two teaspoons and we're gonna do front and back, obviously, top and bottom. And then we're gonna just take a whole bunch of this and rub it in there. Oh, look at that. I better order some more of this now. This smells good already. Okay, go ahead and do the other side. Okay, so we got the pork belly all prepared, hot sauces on there. I'd say we used maybe three to four servings at most. I didn't measure it out, but judging by the drops that came out, I'd say at most it's three to four servings of it. So I'll take that. Even if we're gonna say that every serving has a carb, that would be four carbs divided by the entire pork belly, plus you have the seasoning on top. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna put this into the refrigerator and we're gonna get the smoker going. Now the reason I'm putting it in the refrigerator is we wanna get those flavors to start infusing into the meat. But also when you're smoking meat, you wanna have the meat as cold as possible because that's what's gonna absorb all that smoke flavor. If you're barbecuing, just like throwing it on a hot and fast grill, you wanna bring the meat up to room temperature because you wanna be able to get the right temperature all the way through. So you wanna have a nice even temperature for the whole piece of meat. But when you're smoking it, since you're going very low and slow, uh, the meat will have enough time to come up to temperature inside of the smoker and the coldness is gonna help all of the flavors infuse. So we're gonna get this in the refrigerator, get everything going. I'm gonna start working on a video. So we will put one on this side, right down the middle. And then obviously we don't wanna put any down here because that's a really thin part. We're gonna put it into this really nice thick portion right here. That's the one that I, you wanna make sure this side is cooked. The, if this side gets cooked, this side will definitely be cooked. So this is the thickest portion, so that's where we're gonna go. Maybe we're gonna move this one and put it over here. This, this is another nice thick area. And we're gonna go fat side up. Going for 160 degree temperature internal. Okay, internal temperature is now 160 degrees. So we're gonna wrap this, but we're gonna do the boat wrap method, which basically means wrap it on three sides but not the top so that it gets a nice crust on top. So this is the boat wrap method. Basically we have the bottom and the sides covered. That's gonna allow the air to get into the top. That's gonna make a nice crust here. 
and we preserve all the juices down below. We're gonna go until we have an internal temperature of about 205 degrees. I, you wanna eat? Yes. I that have, was a silly question. I have a surprise for you. Oh, what is it? You might want to come with me. Okay. Go ahead and open up the smoker. <gasps> oh my gosh, it's back. This makes me so stinking happy. I can't even explain it to you. Okay, here's the only thing. Um, we're gonna eat that. But I know you want to eat now, so we're going to eat some of the uh, eye round. Okay. That's done cooking. All right. You got to wait, it, let it rest for like almost two hours. Okay. Let's go ahead and take a look at it though. Oh, it look at that. It looks so beautiful. Look at all that fat curling in the bottom. Oh, look at that. It's just bubbling up over there. Well done, Joe. I didn't like make this happen, but it was in my heart. I was like, Man, when is the next time that we can have that? Because I want it so bad. <sighs> okay, so I want the pork belly, but I feel happy that I see hollandaise sauce on this beef. Yeah, so I took the leftover uh, round from last night. Now, the way I reheat this, the best way to do it is reheat it in the sous vide, but I didn't feel like pulling out the sous vide. Yeah. So what I do is I make like a little bit of like a water broth, mm -hmm. or like a little bit of, just put a little bit of beef broth or something in there. So we have some of the F-bomb, powdered beef bone broth which is literally just there's nothing in it there's no, it's just mm. beef so i put that in water and then i kind of put this in the water so it doesn't like overcook and then i made a hollandaise sauce in wow. the vitamix now what is the difference between hollandaise sauce and the butter mayonnaise uh a lot more butter and a lot more egg yolks mm. so this is well actually it's less butter more egg yolks so my hollandaise sauce is six egg yolks all right. So I want to make the Maria Emmerich bread. So it is creamy. Six out of that, and then one and a half sticks of butter. Wow. So it's a lot of butter, but it's a lot of egg yolks, and then I put like one or two dashes of a hot sauce in there, and lemon juice, and just emulsify it. So it's similar to the butter mayo, but there's no mustard, and mustard is what makes there's mayo no mayo. Yeah, to mustard it. is what makes mayo it's mayo. It's just creamy deliciousness. Now I know the chickens and the fur babies will want to veto my suggestion, but I think every time we make the bread, make the make the holiday sauce. Yeah. But then they'll be aggravated. The pets will be aggravated <laughs> because they want the egg. Well, there's, there's a lot of it, because I made it in the Vitamix. I have the air disc container, which makes really good like holiday sauce and that kind of stuff. I don't usually use it on a video, because a lot of people don't have that container. Mm -hmm. And it just, it makes making mayo and, and emulsifying things like really good. They also say it's good for muddling fruit, but we're keto, we don't muddle fruit. Now, speaking of like containers, why is there like food processor stuff behind me? I need you to clean it off, like the dust off. Okay. So, um, I went to Costco, I got you a pork belly, and Vitamix was doing- That was a good decision. Vitamix was doing a show. Uh-huh. So, our Vitamix container is actually got a crack in it because somebody keeps putting it in the dishwasher. And um, so it's out of warranty, it's beyond warranty. So I've been, I was gonna get a new container while they were there and look what they came out with. This by the way is dishwasher safe. This is awesome, this is what we need. Also, we pretty much use the Vitamix, we use it for bulletproof coffee or fat coffee a lot. We use it I a lot much for prefer to put make something hot in here because yeah. again i do can get concerned about hot things in plastic so it's not completely avoidable like you can't just never have something hot in plastic we but i avoid it as much as possible our vitamix every single day yeah because even when we're not doing beef and and butter and bacon and eggs we're doing keto chow in it yeah we make a lot of sauces and things in yep. it we make the bulletproof bone broth. Yeah. I mean, we so, do a lot in there. Uh, the, the only downside to this is obviously you can't see what's going on inside, but we also have the big one for keto chow because we always make three keto chows mm -hmm. at a time. But what I really like is, I don't know if a lot of people know, do you know that there's actually markings for how many cups and ounces you have no, uh, on, on a plastic one, but you can't read it. Right. Because it's like, this one's got it on the inside. That's nice. So you can see it. So they were doing a show special because normally this is 200 bucks and it was 99 dollars mm, that's cheap. so that's why i grabbed it 
And then also, I do love our food processor. Mm -hmm. We use it a lot. Yeah, we do. Especially with like the Maria Emmerich egg pudding. Uh -huh. which, uh, talk about something that I want back in my Somebody life. Somebody mentioned it in last night's premiere. Yeah. And I was totally like, oh yeah. Yeah. We're not having that right And there's right nothing now. bad in it. No, I just, and it's got sweetener. It's, just, it's got a little bit of sweetener other than that. And, and it's got cocoa powder. Mm -hmm. But that will definitely be incorporated back into my life after next week. Because it's really good. But you use the food processor for it. It's like the perfect dessert. The problem is, is we have so many kitchen gadgets. Because I'm a kitchen gadget guy. Mm -hmm. And it's just another thing that gets put up on the counter. I mean, and I was putting it away. Then I started using it a lot. Same thing with the KitchenAid. The KitchenAid stand mixer, for a while, we were just putting it places. Yeah. And now we use it on a regular basis. All the time. Thanks, Maria. Somebody's... Oh, it's just... Oh, okay. Okay, sorry about that. Someone was at the door. So the food processor is out. Does that mean we're selling it? I am going to sell it because, again, when I was at Costco, they were having the road show, and they came out with something new, which is going to free up our counter. Mm -hmm. And that is... Look at this. They have a food processor attachment. Oh, wow. So it goes right on the food on the Vitamix stand. Oh wow! So now instead of storing a whole food Two processor, things. you just store the bowl for the food processor. Okay, I like that. And again, that. they were having it a really good show price. It was one hundred and thirty bucks. That's really nice, so, and we'll probably get close to that for oh that food our processor. Food processor. Is, yeah, I'll probably get two or two hundred and fifty dollars for that. Selling it online, either I'll sell it on eBay or I'll list it on eBay, but I'll also put it up on OfferUp. That's I sell so much stuff on offer up. In fact, I'm waiting for someone to come buy an old blower right now. Mm -hmm. so. How was uh, the rest of church? Church was so great. We had lots of kids today, and I actually took a Halloween trick or treating poll that I think the 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 results are super interesting. So I pulled 25 children between the, the grade levels of first grade and sixth grade. Mm -hmm. So we've got all walks of life, different family structures, different grade levels to see what do they want when they trick or treat? Like, what are they on the hunt for? Mm -hmm. I had some kids that they primarily go to a trunk or treat. I had some kids where they marathon the neighborhood and get tons of candy. You know, they go for as long as humanly possible. Some kids that have like a set time, so they they are able to trick or treat for an hour or two. Right. Excuse me. So, I asked them, what are they looking for in their bag? Because I know in the back of my mind, and I didn't tell them what I'm doing, but I'm thinking to myself, am I a jerk for not passing out candy? Right. Like, am I making it so that the the kids that trick or treat at my door are having a less than experience? And I'm always thinking about that. Because I am looking at Halloween through the lens of my personal childhood. Right. And my trick-or-treat experience. But every generation changes. Right? So I ask him, what, what do you like? And the first answer was, full bars are great. Like a full giant Kit Kat or Twix or something bar. That is awesome. Who can afford that nowadays? But just like it was few and far between when we were growing up, right? it's few and far between now. They're like, out of all of the houses that we usually go to, usually we get maybe one, maybe two of those, okay? Then the next thing that they said, the number two thing that they wanted, toys. Really? And I was like, okay, tell me more. Why do you want toys? And here's what it was. They said that no matter how much they trick or treat, when they get home, their parents only usually let them have five or six pieces of candy. The rest of it goes in the trash. Really? No matter how much wow. that they get. Now, for some of the kids, their parents weigh the trick or treating bags. So there is an incentive to trick or treat a lot because you're going to get the poundage. Okay. <laughs> so they, they get home from trick or treating, their parents weigh their sacks. And then they give them like a dollar a pound for their trick-or-treating efforts. I but actually commend those parents. Trick or I was not that good of a parent. But here's the thing. The candy still goes in the trash. Like I said, I commend those parents. So I'm thinking to myself, well, if I don't want to have my trick-or-treating money, like I want to bless kids in my neighborhood. I don't want to throw money down the toilet. That's true. 
but like, what do I get? So I, so I said, okay, now that you're saying that, I do, because I don't eat candy, I've started getting toys. But I've been trying to get more toys and things like Play-Doh, bouncy balls, horses, jewelry that's not Halloween themed. Right. That it's like everyday stuff. And they were like, good, because the day after Halloween, it's like not as fun anymore. Like we'll, we'll take a few like bat rings and spider rings, but like what we really want is toys that we could play with all of the time. Right. So then they ask me, okay, well, since you're doing that, what are you doing for toddlers? Because toddlers and preschoolers, you can't give them little toys because they might choke on them. So I thought it was that interesting that a first through sixth grader is thinking that way, probably because they have some younger right. siblings, and so that, that's on their mind. So I said, well, what do you suggest? Because in the what I like to do is buy a big bag, it's usually like 11 or $12 from Walmart, play pin balls. They're like the big plastic right. balls, and that way I can hand it to a toddler and, and, they're, and they're fine with it. You know, they're not, you know, they play with it all the time you know, in kids' church. And so they're like, okay, I like that. They suggested Dollar Tree. It's funny that the kids know. Dollar Tree has inexpensive stuffed animals. You just have to make sure that everything's attached and couldn't, like, an eyeball easily come off. Right. Then the other thing uh, that they suggested was little, like, kids, little babies and, and early toddlers enjoy a brand new toothbrush, but like a baby Ooh. toothbrush. So they were like, it comes in packs of like three or four. You could buy that and then, I mean, they'll just like chew on it and stuff. And I thought, these kids are flipping brilliant. So there you go. There is the poll from local kids, different age ranges of like what they want because trick or treating is done differently now than it was when we were kids. Right. Did you tell Caleb about this? Because I know when we told Caleb that we weren't giving out candy, he was like, who wants to come to our house then, right? Yeah. Because he's, again, he's older, right? He's 20 years old. Mm -hmm. So he's thinking the back fact when he was a kid, he didn't want the house that gave toys. He wanted the house that gave candy. But to see that kids now want the toys, that's really, really interesting. One of the children said, what are you giving the adults? And I said, what do you mean? What am I going to give the adults? I don't give the adults anything. Do you, do you give the adults something? And they said, my grandfather gives all the adults shots as they're trick-or-treating with their kids. He's got like alcohol and he's doing shot glasses with the parents as they come around. I thought that was hilarious. I mean, I couldn't help but laugh. That I mean, is... that was hilarious. But it was wow. funny that it was like, well, that's how we do it at our house. So there you go. Okay. With that being said, we're going to finish eating. You need to preview day 35. Yeah, I don't even know. Any. I've lost 30 count. something. 30 something. You need to preview yesterday's vlog so that we can do it. I'm going to go wrap up the pork belly, let it rest, mm -hmm. and then I'll eat some pork belly later on. I know you said you were going to fast the rest of the day. Mm. You ready? I am so ready. Ooh, that looks good. I'm more excited than last time because oh, I know how good it tastes. That. that is so good. Okay. You got to slice it up. Well, you got to cut me off a slice for now, but you also have to put one in the air fryer. Okay. Hey, it's time to eat. What are you watching? I'm actually watching something completely mm -hmm. fascinating. So I'm watching the live stream this week from Radical Geek, which is our friend Matreya. And... She knows a lot about coffee. Like, I love coffee, but she has a lot of coffee knowledge. And so she has all kinds of ways to brew coffee. And I was actually just asking her about what region of the world does she think, you know, that she enjoys the coffee beans from. Okay. So, like, maybe you like Colombian coffee. And she was actually talking about uh, Arabian coffee and or Saudi Arabian coffee and... um. It's just fascinating. I love that. It's funny because you love coffee, I but love you're coffee. not a coffee snob. Like any coffee. It could well, be dirt coffee, but you won't let me get you, what is it, that Kopi Luau? Right, the one that's like recycled. That stuff's like ris ridiculously expensive. But here's the thing, like, I love the education aspect of it because mm -hmm. she she's talking about like, hey, sometimes okay. I just need coffee to be brewed in the fastest conveyance possible because right. I need it in my system right that's now. That's like every day. That's like me every day. So 
I need to really slow down and be able to appreciate it like she does. Well, you're actually going to get to appreciate pork belly because I made you wait two hours for it to I know, like, and rest. Was I so good and patient? You were, you were very good. All right, so let's first taste it the way you made it, which okay. is the smoked. Mm. It's so, like, I love it because it you can cut it with a fork. Of course, I like the end piece, so. Mm. so Delicious. Good. Somebody put a comment. Does Joe ever get to eat his food warm? Uh, probably not. <laughs> it's like your mom, right? Your mom never eats a warm meal like for the holidays. I, she is exactly like the mom from A Christmas Story mm -hmm. where she's like, doesn't even get to sit down. Yeah. Bless her heart. It's really good. So Rachel likes it after I've smoked it like a brisket. Put she it likes in the to air cut fryer. it up into pieces. Look at the difference. And then put it into an air fryer. And then it gets like crispy all the way around. It's almost like a little bit of a crackling. Mm -hmm. I like the soft aspect, but the crunchy aspect is really good. Okay, so you got a little bit of that hollandaise sauce because there's so much of it left. Uh, but I wanted you to try something. This was an experiment. Okay. I don't know if it's going to work. I have not tasted it. So I made Maria Emmerich's bread. Nothing wrong. So what it's a I, little bit uh, rich. What I did was, after I whipped up the egg whites, I took, I had six yolks left over from the hollandaise sauce. All yolk in a side? I put, the, I put the six yolks in there to see, like, what does it do to the bread. Now, it is no longer protein-sparing bread because I just added six yolks into there. Right. But I wanted to see if it affected wow. the texture. It makes it more like... I feel like the crust is a little flakier. Does that make sense? The crust is definitely flakier. I forgot to put the uh, mm. I forgot to put the the garlic pepper on the outside. But if you hear it, it's like very kind of spongy. spongy. It's almost like bread now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I mean, but again, not protein it's sparing anymore. It's the purpose of the original plan, which is right. Not have so much fat. Now, you couldn't add the egg yolks beforehand. You have to add it after everything is all mixed and fluffed up. Otherwise, oh. the eggs wouldn't, you wouldn't get the wh the whites to whip with the yolk in there. That makes sense. You have to like whip it all up. And then when you add the protein powder, I put in the six yolks. Whip it. Whip it real good. So, okay. Before we sign it off, there was a comment on uh, one of the vlogs. And I wanted to read this instead of putting it in Keto on the Couch. I was pulling comments for Keto on the Couch, and this one came up. Hmm. It was from Sharon. Hi, Sharon. And uh, I think, actually, I think she may have put it in Facebook. And she said, day 33 of my BBBE 90. She's doing 90 days. Way to go, Sharon. She's like, I can no longer call this a challenge. Eating when hungry and stopping when satisfied is totally new to me. Now BBBE is secondhand. Looking back to when I started this and having reservations of like, I'm going to give up cheese. What? No onions, right. no pickles, no avocados. My snack foods. Mm -hmm. I realized how much I was snacking each day out of boredom and not hunger. That's one of the things that we've learned. Very interesting. She said, was it easy in the beginning? No. But that, t that told me that I absolutely needed to do this. Yeah. I told myself, this is not forever. It's just 25 days. Okay. I took it one day, one meal at a time, and feeling and seeing physical changes is now my motivation to keep going. Wow. In, the, in time, I will reintroduce them, but not just yet. Today is my son's 30th birthday, and I will be eating a keto dinner. There will be a minimum amount of vegetables, but I'm okay with that. It's a family celebration. Mm -hmm. But thank you to everyone who is posting your BBE journey because it's great to be traveling with others. Oh, I love that so much. And and I mean, I think it's amazing because, yeah, we did the same thing. We did it for, we were doing it for like 20 days, and we're like, yeah, we can keep going with this. Right. But those were all things that went through my mind. Like, oh, what do you mean? No more cheese? Mm -hmm. No more, you know, stevia? Like, I, I don't think I can do this. But again, like we said yesterday, it takes time. And the longer you're away from that stuff, the easier it is. And you also start realizing how much you relied on it. And we really shouldn't be relying on anything other than just food itself. If right. there's one thing that you absolutely can't live without, like coffee, yeah, maybe it is time to, and again, you can do what you want, but maybe it is time to take a break and then reintroduce it. I would if it was medicine. Yeah. I would if it was medicine. I mean, we've gotten to the point in our life where we're not satisfied to just be like, I'm gonna take medicine and not have a conversation with it and be like, okay, do I need this forever? And I, is there things that I could do differently to work it out? So 
if I've gotten to that bold place, like, did you ever think you would be able to function in your day? Without cheese. No, without your arthritis medicine. Oh no, absolutely not. And the thought of going without it was scary. Mm -hmm. So it was, it really had to sneak up on you that you just didn't need to take it. You didn't right. need to reach for it. I think that if I told you going in, in ahead of this, hey Joe, you're gonna go do officiating some games on Saturday. No, no arthritic medicine for you. You'd be like, ha ha, I'm not gonna survive this. Right. right? And that is medicine. So I think that if I can think like that, go coffee now, it sounds ludicrous right. for me to be like, there's absolutely no way I could do without this thing because I know it's not that right. like important and to my life. And you went 45 days without coffee before and I, this. And I have done it. So I sort of need to have, and I like kind of the conversation she's having with herself. I think that's really important because I feel like when, whenever you're, you're telling the kids something, we'll tell the kids something when they were little as a group, one kid is is like, I'm not doing this. Right. I'm that child. <laughs> I'm the child that's like, I'm not doing this. And I freak out first. Right. And you sort of take that child off to the side and you explain, this is why we're doing this. Right. Like we're, use your words, Rachel. Don't just fit pitch. But like, talk to me about why are you upset about this? This is why we're doing this. Explain it. And that, that's kind of what you do as a parent, right? right? So sometimes we have to do that with ourselves mm -hmm. and just have that conversation. It's not for forever. We're doing it right now. Let's see what can happen. Yeah. I think you can do this. I believe in you. I love that, that self-talk that's a positive conversation. Not like how I used to look in the, the mirror and be like, you're a monster, Rachel. Like, right. you're terrible. You can't stick to goals. Like, that's not a good conversation. Yeah. Well, let us know down in the comment section if you are doing the beef, butter, bacon, and egg challenge, or if you're doing something else, or just in general throughout your keto carnivore journey. Yeah. Has there been something where you were like, there's no way I'm yeah. going to give this up? There's mm -hmm. no way I'm going to be able to give this up. And then you found after a couple of weeks, you're like, oh. Wow, I really relied on that. Like I know yeah. when your mom got started, right? She was like, "There's no way I'm giving up sugar ever," right? There was and no way. And now three years in, yeah, and it's like second nature to. So let us know down in the comment what kind of things have you struggled with in the past, and now you're like okay with the fact that it's gone and didn't even realize how much you were relying on it before. Yeah. So if you like seeing videos like this, take a look at some of the videos that we have linked right over there. Also, make sure you take a look at our most recent video, which I'm gonna put right over here. But whether you had this way or you had this way, don't forget to have this way. Subscribe to our channel and click the little bell icon, and that way every single time we upload a new video, you'll be alerted to it. Till tomorrow. Bye. Bye.